everybody, what's up? Walker here with episode number 18 of my Thomcraft playthrough series. So, first of all, you can see that I finally finished the ceiling and the roof. Because I got really tired of when I was trying to record and then it would start to rain and then I couldn't hear even myself recording. So, we did that. We haven't finished this yet because I'm not going to leave that there and I'm not sure what I want to do over here yet. And this is just a very basic. I, I didn't put any design skill into this whatsoever. Oops, let's get back inside. Now then, and I also moved my furnace into this room. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now then, this episode I was going to make a cow farm. And I even, you can see I have the fence out there getting ready for it. I have somewhere around here, I have all the cores and the golems and everything. I was going to get right to it. But I ran into a slight issue that we have to fix first. I'm, uh, you'll see that I moved and finished making my jars for the Magic Essentia. Okay. Which pipes right through here. And I've cleared out this out a little bit more. Here's the problem. It's bogged down. The problem is... All of this is Magic Essentia. None of the arbor is piping up because it doesn't have any arbor to pipe up. We're going to have to fix this too. I figured out how to get coal in here, but we'll fix that later. We're worried about this right now. Alright, so what we're going to have to do, we have a couple of things that we need. All right. What we need to do is, we need some way of keeping the magic essentia flowing and allow this to keep working. The reason is, is we're going to, for our cow farm, we're going to add some more pipe over here. We're going to add another centrifuge and buffer, and we're going to distill this down into Victus and whatever else, I think uh, Terra. Uh, and that way, not only will it send Herba over there, but then it'll send some over here to another centrifuge, which will send Victus down the line to our cow farm. And there's a reason for that, which I know I promised I'd get to today, but we need to fix this first or else we're not going to have any Essentia that we need anyway. So, we have a couple of ways we can approach this, but what I'm going to do is under oops the alchemy tab there's this the essentia crystallization now we're going to make one of these okay and what that's going to do is we attach it to a pipe and it will turn any essentia piped into it into crystallized uh the crystallization form of it so it's pretty much a monobean but a crystal that we turn liquid into solid form, right? And we're going to put it right on the end. I haven't quite decided if I want it in here because this is really just supposed to be the jar room. That's why I cleared this area out. Now there's more. We don't want it to pull from these jars. Okay, we just want it to pull from here. So what we can do is we can add... Do I have any? Oh, I didn't make them yet. We can add valve pipes to direct the flow of where we want it to go. Ah, okay. Okay. Valve pipes. So if we go downstairs, and we come over here, and we say, uh, let's make this a valve pipe. Okay, notice how it's being a pain. Well, let's get out our wand. There. Okay. So that valve leads to our uh, jars, right? And then if we put another valve pipe there, it's kind of a pain to be under it properly there. We can lead this one to a crystallizer. Oh, I got gravel over here. Uh, and that way we can do what we need to do. 
get some of this just cleaned out just so I have space to work. Now I don't know if these are exactly where I'm going to put these because this is okay and fine. All fine and dandy. And actually I should put it right up here but uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work with what I'm trying to try and build. This is all fine and dandy but it means I have to manually do the pipes, right? And that's kind of annoying. The nice thing is though, they work by redstone signal, okay? So how can we get it set up so that it'll automatically know when to pipe Essentia into the jars or when to pipe it to our crystallizer that we haven't made yet? Glad you asked that. Enter Atomogy. Tomogy is a super awesome mod made by Tujin. It adds a whole mess load of functionality that we haven't even looked at yet, but I've unlocked a couple of things because I need to, uh, I need this, the Viz Reader, or, uh, sorry, V Reader. I need a remote comparator along with the crystalline eye, and I need some red crystal and amplified red crystal. And we'll show you what that does. But first I gotta make it. Alrighty, red crystal is just redstone with vitreous. Very easy to make. It acts almost exactly like redstone, but there's a couple of neat tricks that it can do. So let's see. Click that off. Let's make a bunch of it, shall we? And I actually have some. We're just going to make a whole mess out of this because we also need it for amplified red crystal and we need it for the remote comparator. We're going to only make one of these, okay? Okay, good. Now then, we need one, let me think. The amplified, I only need one of the amplifieds. Uh, we don't need that. Oh wait, yes I do. I need, not that, not, oh. Is it just in a table now? Oh, it's just in a table. Well, that makes life a lot easier. There, okay, now we got our amplified redstone and we got our red crystal. Now then, we need, um, is it just red, oh no, it's a derp. It's, it's the same recipe as a uh, regular redstone comparator, except it uses these crystals in your magic table. What? Is it? Wait. Oh! Oh. Oh, I'm a dummy. You know what? And I had actually... I had had gotten an air shard out for that, but apparently I forgot to bring it back out. Alright, we need one of those. We need... that can go in there. One, two, three. Good. Okay. Uh, oh, why did I do that again? Come on. There we go. And an air shard. There. Now we have our remote comparator. That'll be important. we will show you why in a moment. Um, we need, we need to empty our stuff out is what we need. We need the V reader. Three arcane stone, a thermometer, another crystal. So we need another, another. And we need three more of those. I'm trying to get this done fast because I really, really wanted to do the butchery stuff today. So if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, sorry, but them's the breaks. Um, yeah, that there, and wasn't there supposed to be? Man, I hate having to, God. There. Okay. V reader. Good. The V reader is really cool. It actually reads the amount of V that's in stuff. See, I even had this table set up to get ready for the butchery one, uh, butcher core and everything, but we'll just have to get to it next episode. So, if I put the V reader underneath that, see how it says that it sees that there's 64 in there and I can even 
right click on with a wand and set. So right now it's in total mode with auto capacity. I can set it to say, all right, if there's one, if there's eight, 25, yada, 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 all the way up there. I can set what side it outputs to and I can invert the signal. Okay, so if these are true, it will output a signal or if any of these are not true, it'll output a signal, if I remember right. Um, the modes are pretty self-explanatory. So inverse mode is pretty self-explanatory. Total, uh, total count of all aspects compared against the capacity. Uh, high mode, the highest count of any one aspect will be used for the value. Same with low mode is just the opposite. And then capacity is if the item is full output the signal okay and you can use these for nodes you can use these for a bunch of stuff check them out and I'll go I mean, I gotta, I'm gonna have to use a mess load of these later on so I'll explain them way better later on but you're gonna see a basic use for them I'm gonna put this bad boy down oh man what I'm gonna have to do is I need to make an if-then circuit and I'm terrible at making redstone circuits. All right, just give myself some space. I'm honestly I'm terrible at making circuits, so we're gonna we're gonna try and see what happens. And I might have to pause to get some stuff. Oopsies. Well, it's just the bottom. So I'm almost halfway done this episode already. All right, we're gonna put this bad boy down right there. Okay, we're gonna put this remote comparator, which works very similar to a standard redstone comparator, except doesn't have to be right next to the object that it is looking at okay it's pretty cool now the other thing that you can do is you can have it look at other things okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right on top of the V reader okay um, so normally you would put like a redstone comparator next to a chest right and it would output a signal based on the how full the chest is or something like that well the comparator you could put down the line and it would react to how full the chest is okay and then what we can do is we need our spider eye if you have seen my census and trees if, if you've seen my um, cake factory You'll have seen me using remote comparators and the crystal eyes quite a lot in that one. So what we got to do with this thing, this thing is a crystal eye. Uh, it's allowed certain thomic devices to observe other locations. It can be attuned to a specific location by right clicking with the on the desired block, then place it to the attuned eye into the slot provided by the device. Just limit how far away, it's about 20 blocks, but you can, uh, some of the ones have different requirements. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the last jar in the line, okay? Because the thing about pipes that I've, I tested this is it always fills the closest one first, okay? And I'm also gonna have to uh, label these. So we're gonna go. I. Okay, now it's attuned, and if you look down here, you can see that it's uh, showing me exactly what it's, the, the position it's attuned to, how far it is away from me, and what it is, which happens to be a warded jar. And we're going to take this eye, and we're going to come over here, and we're going to put it, boom, on there. Now see how it's got, it's reading that jar from over here. Isn't that cool? I thought that was cool. Alrighty, so we're almost there. Let's just make sure that it is put outputting a signal. It is. So next, we've got to set this up so that if that's full, this valve will turn on and this valve will turn off and then vice versa. So if 
this is getting a signal, if this has a signal, this should turn off. And then this should turn, this should be on. No, wait, sorry. This should be on, this should be off. There, that's what we want, okay? And the way these work is when a signal is applied, they turn off, and when a signal is removed, they turn on. So we need a signal that is on. And that's gonna suck. But first of all, okay, we got that, we got that, we got that. The amplifier, okay, so let's go with the red crystal real quick, and then I gotta pause so I can go and get um, the stuff I need for this. Because I gotta build one of these, I need some more of these, and we have all made dispensers before, so I need that too. So I'm gonna get the materials together for that and then come back, okay? But first, let's just do this. Okay, so we know how redstone works. You know, you lay it down, it loses strength over time. Red crystal works very similar. Okay, see how it's uh, moving the signal? Right? Except what you can do with red crystal is you can direct the direction you want the signal to go in with these little uh, gems already on the side. So see how I, I removed the signal from this going this direction? Right? We actually don't need that one. And I can do it over here too. Check that out. Isn't that cool? I love that. That is... I wasn't too keen on Atomogy when I first started playing with it, but that's really cool. Now the Amplified Red Crystal um, shouldn't have been going that direction, but what it will do uh, is it will... these will lose signal just the same way as Redstone will. The Amplified Red Crystal will sort of act like a uh, repeater without the repeating part of it. It also, if you're using red crystal to uh, transmit the signal, it'll keep the signal strength way further than regular redstone. Okay, so I'm going to pause right now, go get the stuff I need to make the crystallizer, and then we'll be right back, okay? Okay. All right, and we're back. And there's one more thing I forgot that we need to make. We need to make... I don't have enough sticks. We need to make a actual redstone repeater for this particular build. And you might be like, well, Walker, you said that the amplified redstone was kind of like a repeater. I did, um, and I didn't test this build using it. So the amplified red crystal I made because I thought we might need it to uh, repair the signal without having to make a bunch of repeaters. But oops, yeah, that was dumb. I know how to make that. There, okay, but in my infinite wisdom, I didn't test it down here first. I tested it in a build in a single player world first, and it, I, I guess I don't need it. Anyway, here is how we make an Essentia Crystallizer, okay? Two iron, two balance, two any wood planks, I just happen to have great wood, an Essentia tube, and an alchemical construct, okay? Uh, and however many that you need without your viz discount. Five, five, and 15, okay? And we're gonna plop that down and I'll show you how that works. Cause we're gonna go and try and get this set up and working. I got about eight minutes left. All right, and I've already done a little bit of work here, but because I haven't uh, put anything down yet, it's not fully tested yet. Okay, now then, I want how do I want this to work? I put that there, that sends a signal. But I want that one off. One on, one off. Uh, hmm. They're both on. That needs to be off. That needs to be off. Why isn't that off? Um. Shouldn't that be turning off because I have a signal going to it? I don't, I don't quite remember. 
I, I told you I'm terrible at redstone circuitry. Turn off. Is it because it's on a great wood block? That shouldn't matter. Oh yeah, that it mattered. Okay. Well then, I guess great wood planks can't transmit a redstone signal. You know what? I don't actually know if I don't honestly know if that's the tr truth for all of it. All right, and so just to test, okay, because we have this set up here, and this is like the most shoddy redstone uh, circuit in the world. But we're going to we need our wand. We're gonna invert the signal, and it works. And it works. Okay, so right now it's set so that if it's full, it actually opens up the valves. We don't want that, so we're going to invert the signal. Now then, what happens is, is when these jars are full, or rather when the last jar down there is full, it will close the valve to leading to them and open the valve that's over here that's going to lead to a double chest. Uh, yep. And our Essentia Crystallizer. And we're going to plot that right there. And there it goes. All right, so it does one at a time. It's kind of slow. We might make another one so that we have two of them doing this. Um, but now you can see everything starting back up again. That's getting moved over here to be centrifuged. This is all working. That's working. And if a little bit, we should see it pop up to the crystal. Now then. If I wanted to, I could supply it with Terra V, Centa V, and it would increase its speed. Right now, I don't care how slow it goes. I just really wish it would go fast enough so that I could show you what it does. Alrighty, so that in a nutshell is the V Reader, okay? It reads anything that's over it and sees how much V it contains. So if I had it underneath the jar, it would read the jars. If I had it underneath a node, it would read the node. If I had it underneath um, one of the, uh, the furnace, it would read the furnace. There we go. Crystallized Essence, one. These will stack up to 64 each, and then if I need some, I can throw it into the furnace, and it'll cook it up. Cook it up, Dan. Now that's going to stave off our magic essentia overload for a little while. It's very slow to process, as we've seen. It will at least let us uh, keep this running for quite some time. Sorry, sorry, little buddy. Now. <laughs> Now, another thing that we're going to have to do, but I'm going to wait until after I've gotten done getting the butchery set up. See, I even, I had it all ready to go. Hi. <laughs> okay, well, that won't be a problem once I get a special lantern put in here. The other problem I got, see how I don't have... He's not picking up any wood. I got too much wood. So I need a way to stop these guys from working. And we're going to get to that after I get done making my butchery. Okay? Because I'm still going to go find cows even. And let's just go down real quick. Check. Everything's working. Now I got three. So the V-Reader will read what's ever on it. The Comparator will over, uh, will uh, take over that 
and we'll read um, uh, it can read at a distance so long as we have a crystalline eye put on it okay and there's way more uses for this that we'll get into much later I didn't really want to get into atomogy right just quite yet because it's kind of more advanced redstone mechanics and I wasn't quite there yet but we needed to get this fixed because if we just, it wasn't fixed, we wouldn't be able to centrifuge the Herba into Victus. Alrighty, um, eventually we're going to have all of our jars down here because the uh, altar can draw Essentia right through the floor. So we won't even have to have them all lined up here. But uh, yeah, what do you think of my new... Uh, ceiling and everything. I think it looks actually pretty nice. It's not amazing, but at least it gives it a little bit of character. I love, you know, I wasn't really sure about the fence windows at first, but I was using them in my uh, single chunk challenge videos as a replacement for glass because I didn't have much sand. And I kind of like them. I like them enough to put them over here. We'll do something with this wall. I might just bust it down and open it all up. And we'll do some other stuff in that area when we come to it. So that, in a nutshell, fixes our V problem, our Essentia problem. And I, I, I know I said I was going to do butchery this time. Now we can do it next time. We have all the stuff that we need set up, ready to go. I have all the research done. I have the table set up to get the... Lamp of Fertility. I have all the Essentia I need to get the, the Butcher Core and another Gather Core. I have my fenced-in pen. The only thing I don't have yet is cows. I was debating on if I should go out between videos and get a cow, or I need two cows at the bare minimum, or if I should do it on video. But the way it looks, there might take forever to find a cow because I did kind of clean them out whoa whoa I did kind of clean them out pretty good didn't I I could get another sheep 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 ah there's a cow and of course I don't have anything to draw it with me probably may I should may probably make a lead and lead it back Alrighty, so that's gonna about do it. He's just gonna keep on working until we make a device that tells him not to work anymore. I mean, it's fine. It's not like they're ever going to um, run out. We've got plenty of great wood saplings. He'll just keep planting them. So <laughs> I guess our uh, magic essentia issue is solved. With that, we're gonna say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. You don't have to, it's your choice. Subscribe to my channel for more Minecraft and Dwarf Fortress videos released Monday through Friday. Uh, share my videos with your friends. If you really enjoy them, I'm sure they'll enjoy them too. And with that, I will say, check you later.